This is not New York in the 70s. This is not Berlin. This is us. One on one has always been the heart of creative energy where we just play, go at it. We get the best photographers, you know, best illustrators, best writers. There's something happening every day and I feel really fortunate to be part of this community. There's a do-it-yourself attitude here. I don't know if people realize how small this place is. <laughs> it's really small. You know, there are still lots of ideas going on and we have really nice restaurants, we have really nice bars. The story that hasn't been told, I guess, after the crash and after the revolution is how it's now. That we voted the old shitheads back, so it's just uh, the revolution really just it ate its children and, and asked for dessert. Before 2008, before the crash, it was just too expensive for most people to come here. Something that happened after the crash was, ah, okay, maybe tourism is the right way, maybe that is our gold mine, and people have been focusing a lot on that. And, uh, uh, and the tourism has increased incredibly. You know, probably when we started publishing, uh, probably around three, 300,000 people are coming to Iceland a year, now there's a million, so it's a lot of change from 2003. Because it's like a double-edged sword, the tourism here, because um, it probably helps with a lot of things, but it can also be overwhelming because it's such a tiny town and things are being demolished and for, to make space for hotels, more hotels. Uh, then there's nothing to see except hotels and other tourists. Within the center, but the prices have been getting higher and higher. 50% of my income comes from tourists. But my studio is totally downtown. I live totally downtown. My shop is totally downtown. So I really don't want to lose my space. And uh, I mean, they just changed the owners the other day and, and I was getting paranoid about it being turned into a hotel. It's going to be like Benidorm in five years if they're going to continue like this. I don't want the center of Reykjavik to turn into a hotel district and it won't, no longer will be the center of Reykjavik, really. This is where this community lives, so obviously if more and more of us are going to uh, flee the situation, then I don't know what will happen. After the final crash, it's more easy to get people to, you know, do stuff for you, write, photograph, illustrate. It's really important to get, the, you know, the you know, best people and best creative people to work with you. And I think we have a good status with that, you know, the, because we are independent and, you know, we respect our people, what they do, and they have this freedom. I don't have a feeling all that much that art or the creativity has changed all that much. The ways are always blurry and nobody really knows how to make ant meat, you know. Like that's going to be a constant lottery for everybody. The drive to do this is, is coming for, from a much deeper rooted creative space. There aren't that many people that can live only by the, the one profession they chose. I'm not only doing it to like, keep myself alive, but I really like having many projects at the same time. I'm just waiting for the bubble to burst, so there will be more fun again. <laughs> of course, we need to do something about this crazy growth of tourism. It's just like in our hands how we deal with it. 
you know. Because I don't know where this is going. But please don't put more hotels downtown, I think we're, we're good at the moment. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to be where I am if I wasn't, uh, you know, friends with all these people who live here as well. If I wasn't connected to this network of artists. I'm not worried about, you know, the survival of art itself. I think we will find a way, um, just like Jeff Goldblum said about nature in Jurassic Park. That was a really dumb reference. Selling has never really been on anybody's priority. It is really about progressive art and try to, you know, push the boundaries.